Hey, what's up everyone? I hope you all are uh, safe and well at home, quarantine and uh, washing your hands. Uh, I'm in my bathroom because today, today I am finally, here they are, going to soak these in water, put my feet in them, sit in the water with my feet in these bad boys, and then wear them and hopefully get that leather broken in because I'm just going to try it. I've heard that people do this with the engineer, especially back in the day, so. So let's give it a go with the 2972. Let's do this. Water is running, the tub is getting full, and I have the engineers on, so I'm gonna step in, set my timer, and let's do this. So you see the timer is set, uh, started at 10 minutes, and I have, uh, I'm just sitting here on the uh, edge of the uh, tub with uh, my boots in there. And the water is nice and warm, I can feel it. And uh, yeah, we're gonna see how it goes. Set this thing for 10 minutes and I'm gonna finally see if this break this in and Maybe I should go a little higher to cover this part here. Cause this part here is one of the bits that's like annoying. So let me go a little higher. Add a little bit more water. So we have about uh, three minutes left and um, actually feels warm and nice and warm. Just soaking these uh, Soaking these boots, my feet feel warm in here. All right, so we got a, a less than a minute left. Soaking these bad boys. Take a look here. All right, so it is time to take out my boots. Actually, it's actually perfect time to make a mess because I'm gonna get up, make a mess by taking these off here and getting these on the floor. Let's see how much I can shake these off. <clears throat> All right. So they're still feel nice and warm. So now I'm gonna wear these until they dry, and uh, we'll see how it goes breaking them in. So the boots are not waterproof, they're water resistant. And I can definitely tell by while I'm walking, I can hear some squishing. So I'm, I would imagine that my socks are probably damp. Um, and getting them off my socks will probably be, um, they were the white and blue cotton rag from Red Wing. And I'm sure they're gonna be rusty brown when I take off the boots. Um, in the meantime, oh, this is, I don't know, you can't really see it. I'm wearing a Rogue Territory. Um, this is a selvage uh, shirt I picked up uh, while in Portland, Oregon. And while I'm waiting for these to dry, I can probably just talk about a few of the um, things that you guys have requested, like some of the shirts that I've been wearing. I should show you those. I'll put my, um, my camera on a tripod and show those to you while I let these boots dry. All right, let's do it. One brief thing that I wanted to show you guys is how I uh, stack and store my boots. So they're all in the boxes and since I have so many, I can't store them as one would normally store their uh, shoe boxes, boot boxes. So I have the numbers here on the outside so I know um, which boot is which. And then from there, I can just slide out um, whichever boot I'm looking for. So you see how it goes, uh, what is it? One, two, three, I think it's four deep. And then I have another closet um, uh, stacked with these. So this is um, this slides and then there's a whole other thing over here. And then that one slides over here. 
and then there's a whole nother one over here. So, yeah, there's a lot of boots. If you guys are wondering how, and then I also have a storage unit with more boots. Too many. Here are a couple of things that I picked up while I was in Europe. So you guys saw the Ironheart shirt that I wore, that I picked up in Manchester uh, at Rivet and Hyde. I wore this one and um, it's very thick. This is a wool flannel. Um, great piece, although it is expensive. Um, this I got, I think I got this in a medium size. Yeah, this is a medium. And I think it fits really well, it has a nice cut to it. It's not as baggy as you would if you were to find um, a flannel that you can probably find for a cheaper price, maybe um, at, let's say, like a, in here in New York, it's called Days New York. You could probably find a flannel like this for much cheaper, but it won't be as tailored as this one is. So, worth the 300, eh, I don't know, but the fit is great. I also picked up this one in Amsterdam. This is Pike Brothers. It's a uh, denim vest pinstriped with uh, three pockets. This is very cool. I just uh, haven't really worn it as much as I'd like to, but um, this was another great find at Concrete Matter in Amsterdam. Uh, this is uh, Pike Brothers. I'm gonna show you something else that I picked up in London. Okay, this sweatshirt here I picked up at Son of Stag, and this is Toys McCoy. And if you are a fan of Steve McQueen, this is an exact uh, replica of a sweatshirt he wore. Uh, this is from, uh, it's called Real McQueen Toys McCoy product. Uh, they have the rights from Steve McQueen, used with permission of his son, um, from his, uh, his trust. So this is, let's see what the back of here says. The back, I'm going to do a close up of here. So there it is, Toys McCoy, costume company, Steve McQueen. This was a great find at the uh, store Son of Stag in London. A couple other things really quickly. Uh, I picked up in Amsterdam from uh, Tenu Dinim. These are uh, the Pablo, uh, Pablo Fit. And it's like, a, he said it was like a uh, salvage denim, like a greenish, has like a greenish hue to it. Um, these fit really nicely. Um, I didn't really need another uh, salvage denim <laughs> jean, but when I spoke to Rudy at Tenu Dinim, and uh, he sold me on these and I'm glad I picked them up in the end because uh, the fit is really nice and um, the, the quality is quite impressive on, on this, uh, this jean. So let me get a little close up of that. Okay, the other thing I picked up at uh, Son of Stag, this, these are Spellbound um, Selvage Chinos, Japanese brand. Uh, these, I, I'm always looking for like a nice salvage chino and so um, I spoke with uh, the owner of a Son of Stag and I tried on a few different things and ended up taking, picked up these and then that, uh, that sweatshirt that I showed you, the Steve McQueen sweatshirt. Um, so uh, this was a good find, a really nice fit. Uh, I think I may have washed these already because I think I had got something on them. but. Um, the the button came off, so I'm gonna have to get that sewn back on. Uh, but uh, great find at Son of Stag, Spellbound Salvage Chinos. The other thing, which I did not pick up in Europe, but I just picked up another pair. Uh, this is the Grease Point uh, Salvage Work Jean. It's really nice. I I should have sized up. I think I know it's gonna stretch, but I should have uh, done another size up just for comfort. Um, but 16 ounce uh, denim, it's very thick, gorgeous. Amos in uh, Portland, Oregon, who makes these, just he does great work. This is the second pair I picked up, and I'll probably get another pair um, once all this craziness uh, dies down, but um, very happy about these. I love the copper rivets in here, just really cool. Uh, something that you don't, well, you do see in, in workwear, but in, in like a you know, like a fashion uh, work jean, that, which this is, although you can work in it, um, that's nice. And I, I do get uh, quite a bit of compliments on, on that, but you can definitely feel a 16 ounce uh, jean. You can definitely feel that. All right, so uh, let's go outside and do some uh, color comparison of some boots. 
All right, so I made it outside and now I'm gonna do a color comparison of a couple of boots. Someone requested the 8011 and the 8112 uh, color comparison. But um, what, I brought out a couple others. But what I wanted to do, uh, another question someone had was um, where to get some of the exclusives that I get. Um, so I usually get my boots at Grown and Sewn, uh, Grown and Sewn Red Wing. If you go now to uh, grownandsewn.com, they uh, revamped their website and they have a code. You can get 20% off of their, uh, their, um, their clothing. I do uh, a lot of uh, denim shirts and uh, the canvas chinos that I wear. I absolutely love them. Um, it is uh, WFH20. Uh, go to grownandsewn.com and you can use that code and you can get 20% off on their uh, their clothing. So check it out. Um, let's see, what else? Okay, so let's do this color comparison um, of these, uh, I have three, three boots and then I brought out a fourth just to show the, the exact color. Um, what else was I gonna say? This is kind of like, just like a hodgepodge video because I, <laughs> I have a lot of questions that I get asked and since we're all kind of quarantined and stuck inside, I thought, might as well do this for you guys. And if you guys have any other requests, I'll definitely um, do them while we are all stuck and not able to do what we normally do. All right, so, um, oh, by the way, the engineers feel really good. So uh, let me show you really quickly. So in, uh, this is in the uh, daylight. Uh, they feel really good. They look good, actually. I really love them. I love these. These are the copper rough and tough engineers. So far, I honestly think that's the trick to breaking in an engineer is just soaking that bad boy with your feet in there and walking around the entire day, or not the entire day, until they dry, which could take the entire day because I soaked them for 10 minutes. But they feel really good. I don't have any of that pain that I normally have across the top of the foot, nor at the, um, the base around the heel where it kind of like sucks you in. Um, like I see all these these uh, guys, uh, these street style uh, photos of these guys in Japan with engineers that are, look uh, nice and beat up, and that must be the trick. They soak them and just get them to mold on their feet, because um, I know that is uh, what the um, a postal worker uh, told me um, when I did that video. Uh, how they break in their their shoes is they soak them in water and then they put them on. Um, and so far, um, I think I'm about an hour in, hour and a half in. This is what the trick is. I, I'm, I'm digging it. I, I, I don't know what if I would do that to my rough outs though. I can't really soak them. I mean, I guess I could, but the color would totally change. But with the black chrome and then the Oro and then the, what is it, the Klondike, I think I may do that. All right, let's get into this color comparison. Okay, so here's a color comparison. On the left, you have the 8112 Iron Ranger, and then you have the 8011 uh, Munson Ranger, and then I brought out um, the 9016 Cigar, just so you can see the colors. The, the Iron Ranger, the 8112, um, is made of the Oro, and I brought out the 875 as well, to show the, that's the color, the uh, original color and I guess I bought the um, Iron Rangers used and so they have been treated so um, just to show you how that color should normally look this one just kind of has like a, a shine to it that's the only difference really um, as you can see but I would say the The cigar and the um, Iron Ranger 8112 kind of look close. I'm gonna move these side by side. That cigar, after that oil um, oral's been treated a bit, kind of looks a bit close in color. All four of these are just really beautiful colors though, to be honest with you. All right, thank you guys uh, for watching this hodgepodge video. Uh, if you have any requests, go ahead and uh, let me know. 
And uh, thank you for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. And remember, be a boot.